So this right here is my four foot rainbow fish aquarium that I set up like two months ago. I've never done really anything to it. So I suppose technically you would call this tank overgrown, wouldn't you? I absolutely love it. And no matter what side you look at the tank from, it just, it just looks so good. Possibly it's some of the healthiest growth I've ever seen in any of my tanks. Since I actually set it up, I think I've like changed the water maybe once or twice. And when I say change the water, I mean like just a, just a bit off the top really. Um, it's had the glass sort of scraped all over once as well. Again, or maybe twice. Other than that, I've not touched it at all. I mean, you can clearly see I've not trimmed any of the plant. Look at how gorgeous these are. Now, I'm not running any CO2 in this tank at all. And the reason the plants are growing so well is the initial substrate system that we set up. It's one that I've been using quite a lot recently and it works so well. You basically start off with a nutri base, you put on your crushed root tabs, and then you put some aqua, uh, not aqua soil, well, it is aqua soil. It's called like aquarium pond soil. So it's a little bit different than the dried beaded stuff you get. Anyway, aquatic soil is what it's called. It's for ponds, like pond baskets. Laid that all in, capped it all over with sand and gravel, and that was it. That's all I've really done to it since I set it up, but it has worked so well. So like my main focus when I'm setting up a fish tank is to make sure that I can get those plants growing really well. And the reason being, if I can get the plants growing well, the water will be good. If the water's good, the fish will be really, really healthy. And I also find that the more plants and the better the water quality, the more fish that I can add to the mix as well. So for example, these rainbow fish aren't small by any means. So up against my hand here, you can see they're actually quite a decent size. We have actually got a good size filter running, but the majority of the work is gonna be coming from that nice substrate system we created and the pure abundance of plants in here, not to mention this absolutely huge piece lily now coming up the top, which you can't see right now, but it's got a huge root system that runs all the way through the tank. All the hydrocotyl Japan that you can see there is sort of like entwined in all the root systems. It actually looks really cool. And the hydrocotyl Japan is also like creeping all over that top section and coming right out of the tank. Now this is gonna be a lot harder task today than you'd imagine, because uh, I'm not very good at this bit. <laughs> You're probably thinking, why have I named the video detail in your tank? Well, I just, I personally get, I don't like the word maintenance. Like, I don't know, I just, for me, it just sounds boring, but detailing, I mean, I'm up for doing that. Like when you detail your car, you know, you get in the nitty gritty and get it like, like looking spotless everywhere. I'm up for doing that to a tank like this. Usually what I tend to do is when a tank gets to the point where we're at now, I say it's finished, it's done, and I sort of strip it down and move on. That's different for this tank. I love these fish and this is the best setup I've done for them. It works really well. They're growing lovely. Um, they swim about everywhere. They, they look great as well with, against the backdrop of green, the color pops, because they're such a colorful rainbow fish, I mean, obviously. So yeah, I just want to strip it back a bit. Uh, I've got another tank that's set up, ready to go, hardscape anyway. I want to use some of these plants in there so I can reuse those. And let's just take it sort of right back again, but keep that sort of color pop, get everything tidy, you know, really get that substrate looking perfect again and just replenish the home back to what these fish deserve. So here is a really nice before shot of the tank. I'll probably be using this for the thumbnail, but it's a good comparison later on. I think we can agree, beautiful, but also just a bit of a mess. Now, when you see a lot of people doing their tanks, they sort of drop the water level first and then start like doing things. I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna muddy up the water. But even the first things I'm gonna do is just gonna create dust and rubbish just floating around the water column. So I'll just take that water out again afterwards. It's, you know, I never fill my tank right up with water. So this right here is the water level I tend to stick to. That's because rainbow fish can be jumpy. I very, very rarely get fish jumping and that's mainly due to the fact that I keep that water level a good inch and a half to two below the sort of top of the uh, glass. But yeah, really good tip I found as well. If you're using floating plants in your tank, you take them out now before you trim anything or do anything. First job, take out the floating plants, save the ones to decide the ones you want to put back in. If there's too many, you can chuck some out. I've been donating my uh, red root floaters to Maidenhead Aquatic so they can sell them on, you know, just sort of giving back a bit, I guess. But yeah, always remember that it's such a pain trying to go through all your floaters. That sounds wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I have just picked up these nifty little buckets. Ugh. 
They're like painter's buckets, and I got some more of these as well, because you can never have enough buckets, can you? <laughs> my wife keeps telling me off, she's like, why do you keep buying buckets? You've got so many buckets. Because you can never have enough buckets in the fish room, they get filled up with substrate, with plants, and then all of a sudden you haven't got any, so <laughs> just got a couple more. But these are like for painting. They've got sort of, they're good and durable. Um, did I need them? Probably not, but uh, I've got them <laughs> and I'm gonna use them. So we've got a great little hoard there, most of the bucket full up. Now what I have noticed, let me just put that there for a please don't fall. Um, what I have noticed is that quite a lot of the uh, red root floaters have been intertwined, look, in with the Hydrocotter Japan. I probably could get them out if I scraped it all, but uh, it's not really hurting there. I'm just gonna leave them in there doing their thing. And it's the same on the other side as well. Yeah, look, so that's like, right inside of it all and actually like how all of that looks. I'll probably trim some of the smaller bits back here, but uh, the rest of it, I just want, want it to stay. I've got a funny feeling if I try like ripping these out, it's just gonna dislodge it all. And then this top section isn't gonna look anything like as amazing as it does at the moment. It'll look all disturbed. Obviously it'd grow back in that, but uh, I just wanna leave it. So now that our floating plants are taken care of, we can start trimming. Um, if you want to keep plants and you need something to put them in, just have something. I've got some trays actually. Yeah, I've got some old trays here that I'll just put my trimmings in. Perfect. Um, or if you're not going to do that, have a bin beside you, chuck them in. I don't know why I'm telling you how to throw stuff away. You probably know how to do it. <laughs> and I think the strategy here is going to be stems first. If I get rid of the stem sections like there and uh, all the reds as well, Ludwigias, there's some Rotala I can see just sort of creeping across there as well. We've got the Plustrous Super Red, and we've got more Rotala Green. Now, if I take out all of this, well, trim it right back, it's gonna really expose the sag that we've got here. Now, some of it is really, really tall. It's too tall, it's just gonna block everything else out. And I'm doing another scape at the moment in which I need taller sag for, because it's gonna look like a grass in the background. And these are absolutely perfect for it. It's gonna bring the rest right back down again. No doubt it will be back to the same sort of standard as it is now within a month, because that's the thing Thing with uh, planted tanks, when they really do settle in and get going, there's no stopping them. And of course, as I uh, trim all of these stems, two of them come in its place. So it's just gonna grow back crazy, isn't it? So even after all this time, I find it so difficult to just like throw plants away. This is why most of my tanks are just full to the brim, because what I tend to do is set up a new system or a new tank, and then I use the trimmings from the other tank to sort of fill it up most of the time. I mean, a lot of the the, the tanks you see in the studio nowadays are new, so I had to buy new ones in. Now, I can easily just buy new ones in for every single tank because this is all my business. This, the studio is my business, business, and that's a business expense which goes against taxes and all that sort of thing, and that boring stuff. But even though I can just buy them in, I don't. I still like to use ones that have already grown in. It just looks so much better, and it gives the, the tank that sort of aged or mature look straight away, especially if you've got loads of them. <laughs> Nice little tip actually, if you keep one of your thumbnails slightly longer, you can actually come right in and just very easily pick off each sort of stem, like individually, instead of having to hack it all up with scissors, which can look a little bit unnatural after you finish sometimes. It also means you can be a little more picky about which specific plants you want to take out. So for instance, this massive one here, that's really high, that needs to come out, because it's just going to get um, like completely different as it grows out the top of the water. So I can just take that off individually. Obviously you can still do it with scissors, but you know, there's a little bit more accuracy with your thumb and you can feel right down the stem to where you want to go as well. Some lovely plants in there. Like this one, uh, if I was doing like a show of the tank or something like that, I'd probably leave that one. And what I'm going to do is run my finger down the stem and cut it down low and then I can replant it so it's not so high. So I take my tweezers, pinch it, come right back down. Oh, so many roots in that system there. And there we go, it's now sitting where we want. It will re-root into the substrate, perfect. So that's that side complete with the stems. Like I've trimmed them right back down. That one has just been pushed down into it. So it's like there ready to root as well. 
I took away a lot of the reds in this section. They're gonna grow back in no time, to be honest. When you come around to the side though, you can still, still see that there's lots there. So the main foresty green bit now is all of that uh, sag. This is stuff that we're gonna have to thin out in a little bit. I've still got to do the other side though. <laughs> still got an absolute ton of stems on this side. So much work still to get on with. And so far I've collected up a ton of the Rotala green so many there and loads and loads of reds that's chock a block with Ludwigia and um, what I want to use in escape is like a real red punchy section one one section and then green everywhere else so this is going to work really well for that there we go so many plants I managed to get out of that section I've got all of these Rotala greens up here to add to the collection we've now got, which is this lot. And I've got a good tip for you. If you've taken some plants out like this, got them in trays, um, you, and you're gonna use them like soon, but not straight away, you can just take some paper towel, lay a section on top of each one, and then just spray the whole thing down. Make sure it's all completely covered. Like I've left some gaps there, but I'm just showing you obviously, but yeah, that'll keep it like that for ages. I leave them over overnight sometimes, or if it's going to be a little bit longer, say like a week or so, you can just chuck them down in a bucket. I have a bucket down here. It's actually got waste stuff in at the moment and he's chucking out. But yeah, it just means you're not rushing everything, uh, trying to get it done before it all dries out. So that is the easy bit done. Well, I say easy, I mean clean bit more than anything because you know, chewing plants doesn't really make a mess, especially when you use the finger method. If you scissor, quite often you get little bits of uh, leaf and stuff floating everywhere, but when you, when you use the pinch method, it's actually very clean, there's minimal cleanup afterwards. The next bit though, getting out the sag, that's gonna cause a little bit of disturbance all in that substrate system, and I need the tritus to sat on the top. That's gonna get into the water column. It's gonna cloud it slightly, but that's why I like to keep the filters running. There's no problem with that. And afterwards, I will clean out the filter, at least the pre-filter section anyway. Inside will be absolutely fine. But we'll get to that bit later on. Now it's time to just dive right in and just get going on the biggest sections. So all the new growth around these edges, that's looking pretty short, but the original sort of plants that I put in, so you can literally see it going right to the top, that middle section, I can just take that, there'll be a clump, there'll be a ball I can get hold of. You just have to be really gentle. And there really is no way to do this other than to get right down there, grip the base, can't really show you, and just wiggle it gently. It's gonna pull up some other plants as well, that's just, just part of what we're doing. I'm just pulling up, I can feel the roots coming free. I'm trying to snap them as well just by feel, because otherwise I'll just, if I kept pulling this now, it would pull every single plant up because they're all joined. So now we can see we're starting to get the mulm coming up. There we go, there's the root system. That's what I'm after. Cool, nice big plant. Okay, there's another one right behind it. And once you've got one out like that, I'm now seeing that I can get the rest quite easy. There's one, there's one. And because it's all so well rooted, it snaps quite easily as well rather than just yanking everything up. Oh, this section here is a bit of a beast though. <laughs> right, that's a good clump. That worked really, look at that root system. It's gone crazy. So I've cleared an absolute ton out of that. Loads and loads of swim room. We've still got that real natural, nice look though. Look at the top here. <laughs> that is so much sag. So I've now inadvertently actually just released a ton of nutrients into the water column. Now the filter will just pick this up and it will just go in its pre-filter. So it's not like it's gonna be floating in there causing algae. So I'm not too worried about that to be honest, but due to the way we created the substrate, when you rip stuff out of it, it's gonna pull a little bit up. I tried to be as careful as I could, but you're gonna get some. Uh, it'll be fine though. Actually, it'll be interesting to see the TDS. Ugh. So obviously there's particles now all floating around the water. That increases the TDS. I think it was about 150. Yeah, we're now at 2, 217, 218, which to be honest, isn't bad at all. Oh man, we are now looking so, so fresh. Still a bit misty, obviously, but now's a good time to do a little glass scraping. Along this top line here, you can see, if it focuses, there we go, like, like a scum line, just where obviously, Everything's been evaporated over time. So I top up this tank probably once a week and it probably goes down about that much in that time. Like on a Monday or something, I'll come in and I'll just sort of top up 
everything as it's needed. So because I don't heat the tanks, people take the mick out of me for saying that now because I say it so often, but because I don't heat the tanks, I heat the whole room, it tends to mean that there's not a massive difference in the temperature of the tank water and the, and the air temperature. It's like very minute difference, like half a degree or something, which means you get less evaporation. It's just everything's matching and yeah, it's just the surface movement that can create that. But even most of my tanks, there's barely little surface agitation at all, so I don't get a lot of evaporation. And the good news is that even if I do, this uh, whole unit here, this aircon unit, actually extracts air as well, so it sort of recirculates everything and takes moisture out, which is perfect for a fish room. And this right here is my scraper of choice. I'll leave a link in Amazon for, for Amazon, to Amazon for it. Really rigid, you can also, this isn't a sales pitch, it's not my product, it just works well. Yeah, you can just shrink it down for littler tanks, um, just screws in. Little cover on it, razor blade, um, and it comes with spare razor blades as well, which is awesome. It's got like 10, I think, in total. That should last you a pretty good amount of time. And obviously this is gonna be perfect for scraping the algae off of the glass, but it also works so well on these little sort of mineral deposits. Like, you can hear it scratching it, not the glass, scratching the mineral. If you keep it flat, it can't scratch the glass and then it's just completely clear now. I mean, the, the difference just speaks for itself. Obviously here is where I haven't uh, scraped it and there onwards is where I have. Um, and it also works so well for like green spot algae because green spot algae can be quite sort of welded on and even with like a magnet or whatever, you'd be there for ages and it probably still then won't do the job. Raise the scraper every time. Okay, now we are really starting to get somewhere, but I am not going to change the water. Now hear me out. So there is quite a lot of debate going around at the moment on people's channels and that, whether you should do water changes, don't do water changes, one's good, one's bad. I don't believe any of that at all. I believe, first of all, do whatever you want to do. If you want to do water changes, do your water changes. But I think really it should be dictated by the water parameters of your tank. So I will test the water in a minute just to show you some of the parameters. And I know it will be absolutely fine. I mean, you can tell just by looking at a tank, like everything is great. The fish are healthy. The plants look amazing. It clearly doesn't need its water swapping out. Now, some people would say prevention is better than cure but like when you've been doing stuff for quite a while, you can notice sort of signs if you need to do a water change or there's something off balance with the tank. And on that note, I think you should be very weary, weary, wary, you know what I mean, of people that are like, you know, YouTubers and whatnot, trying to tell you that you have to do something one way. Like how, you know, how big headed to assume that your way is the best way. I can always say, this is what I think is the best for now. That doesn't mean it's the best way at all because even I will probably find a better way in six months time. So yeah, just be careful of that. Like, and just go with your instincts on certain things. If you think your tank needs a water change, do it. If you don't, then don't. But I am now gonna top the tank up just a little bit. I only need to come up like half an inch. Look at that glass. Look at that, crystal clear. It's still a little bit misty because it disturbed it, but it's getting clean clean so fast, isn't it? I've not even added any uh, AccuClear or anything. It's just the, the pre-filter down here on this uh, Oase, I wanna say the middle one, which is the, I don't even know. I don't know these things, okay? 450 maybe? I don't know, the mi middle sized canister they do. This is the pre-filter. Um, I'll take it out in a minute and clean it. It's probably clean if I'm honest anyway, but uh, yeah, it's good just to do something like that as regular maintenance. But to top the tank up, if I spin around here, look, I've got this contraption-y thing going on here. So let me just open it up. So we've got a water butt that I forgot to fill back up, but there's enough water in there for what we need. Anyway, I've got this water butt and inside the bottom there, there is a pump that sits down the bottom and that just pumps it all the way up and into this reel. And then I've got this with a tap. This is just like the inlet of an old filter. I just attached it with some hose. And then look, we've got this tap on and off, which means I can start the pump and it not just shoot everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a case of uh, hooking that in. Oh, bye, bye, there we go. <laughs> and then I bring my extension reel around and just plug it in. That has started the pump. The pump's filling everything up. And now I just open the tap and it's filling with water then that is exactly the same temperature as these tanks. 
because it's in the room. So in my previous studio, I had the tap set up so that um, I had the right mix of hot and cold, and I could put it straight into the tank, add some dechlorinator and whatnot as well. Uh, it's a little bit different in this one. So here is the sink area. Now the pressure for a start, because we're on a lower level, is so high, it pretty much just like blasts out way too quickly. Also, this is all quite new, all the plumbing system for the hot and cold. It takes so long for the hot to come that the back pressure of, a, of the cold, if they're running both together, just keeps making it fluctuate up and down. Can't have that with fish and water going in. And that's why I've got this reel here. So basically I plug it in and then I just put both taps on full. I don't worry about the temperature or the pressure. I then take this, I reel it all the way over to the water butt. I dump it into the butt and fill it up. And then within a day, it's the perfect temperature. And as an added bonus as well, you see the top there, obviously it's exposed so it can gas off is what I mean. So I don't even have to use dechlorinator as well. If I'm adding a little top up from the tap of like a watering can, then I will. But in this instance, it's been sat there gassing off all good. Yeah, anyway, our water level is now up. It takes a little bit longer if the reel is so spooled around because obviously the pump can only do so much. So if I've got a lot to do, I'll unreel it completely. And it feels more than enough, you know, at the pace I need it to. Hello, Timmy. Say hello. <laughs> hello. So let's now open up this pre-filter. Oh, no, turn it off first. That would help. So it's all off. I have to open this side first, which then allows this to open. Hold it down when we open it, otherwise it shoots up from back pressure like that, <laughs> it's my bad. Oh, it's definitely quite full. I can feel the weight of it. Not too bad though. So if we just remove the outer casing, oh, there's a lot of floating plants and that in there. And then just pull that in there. I always like to check inside here for any shrimp because sometimes they can go in and live. But there we go. So this, a pre-filtered water, pretty grimy, it's not too bad to be honest. In fact, I'll use this to water my plants in a minute as well. Now you can wash this in tap water if you want. Lots of people say it kills off all the chlorine. It's only the pre-filter, but also it's long expo exposure to chlorine that kills the bacteria. A little rinsing isn't gonna hurt it to be honest. But yeah, you just gotta take your sponges and you can sort of feel where they're slimy. Just keep squeezing them in the water. That's pretty clean. It doesn't have to be spotless. It'd be there forever if you're trying to get them like new again. But one thing I do is make sure that I get ooh, a bit of plastic there. Don't know how. One thing I like to do is get my thumb right inside just to make sure that you're getting all that gunk out. And there is our relatively clean sponges. Slide them back on. Clip the end back on. Slot it back in. Nice and steady. Just put it down slowly or <laughs> push all the water out again. And away we go. So that's just the uh, filter clearing out the last of the air. And you can see the pressure increases, increases, increases until there's no air left and it's just nice and steady. Now this water will go so good in within like half an hour. It's already quite clear, but it's gonna be like, oh, gin. Oh yeah, quick funny thing. So many of you have been mentioning, water that plant. <laughs> I just forgot it's there. It's not even supposed to be like a plant. I just put it in that bucket and stuck it up there. I just need to throw it away now, then I stop everyone getting on at me. <laughs> what are that plant? <laughs> what we can now do is place our red root floaters back in. Just dump them on top. They sort of self right give them a tap. But they will, yeah, they'll sort themselves out over time. So I'm actually wasting time doing this. I've got so many here. I don't think I want all of them. Um, I'll take some to the shop. So if you guys are local to made, my Made Ahead Aquatics, there'll be more in there soon for you to buy. They're doing them for a really good price as well. Yeah, there we go, look, that's plenty. They'll make their way around. They're actually doing a good little circle in that area, which is nice, because it means they won't get all tangled up. They probably will, what am I talking about? <laughs> but that will become like double that in, in like a week. Triple, quadruple, sorry, that in, in two weeks. You know what I mean? It just grows so fast, but it's, it's such a good way of purifying your water because obviously their top, top leaves are exposed to the oxygen, which is just full of CO2, which means they can grow so fast. And they want nutrients though, don't they? Where do the nutrients come from? The roots. It's just like perfect, isn't it? And they're red, so they look quite cool, I think, especially with the red there. The red there, oh, gorgeous. Yeah, look at that, look. I've got like half a pot left in there. So yeah, I'll bag them up and take them in tomorrow. I've got to go there tomorrow anyway, because I'm picking up two more four foot tanks to go in this section. Obviously, 
all of that will be gone and shifted back and made room for. So we'll have the equivalent of this size again there. It's gonna be so cool. So that's a lot of plants using a lot of nutrients and I think we need to help out the water column here. Normally whenever I do maintenance of any kind, which is like I say, just a little top up once a week, is when I also add fertilizers or CO2 boosters, anything like that that's needed. So we'll start off with our fertilizer. I use Leaf Zone from API and I can, I can feel there's about the right amount in this bottle just left now. And um, then I'll have to open another one, but that's fine. Uh, probably a little bit more than I needed, but never mind. <laughs> and then I use CO2 booster to treat the tank when we've got like algae problems. It is so good for doing that. It almost like burns off hair algae, of which we've barely got any, but you can see here on this sticklet, it's quite a bit on there, and there's quite a bit on the bit, the one on the back. And also I noticed some, I think, yeah, on that Java fern in the middle. So we'll treat the water column, um, just do what it says on the on the label if there's a small amount and it should work some other youtubers or um, like documents online have suggested that you double the dose to treat like large amounts of algae and that is up to you your call cool whether you want to take that advice or not and that's the co2 booster going in i only need one cap of this so there we have it. That's like everything that I need to do and the tank will probably look really good again for another probably one month this time before I need to do that uh, plant stripping exercise again. Obviously from when we set it up two months ago there was only little stumps of plants and I'm already above that now so it's going to be there in no time. But that's all okay. I'm fine with that. A good healthy tank should be you know regularly pruned because the plants are just doing so good.